Hello, Lindsay here. Oh my goodness, it is November 1st when I'm recording this. I won't have this up today because the power and internet have been out. <laughs> it just came back on, but I know I won't have this uploaded tonight. We've had a busy day. It's still very windy out <laughs> and um, and my daughter is in a play. So we're going to go check that out. So this will probably come out this weekend. Um, it was when you're seeing this, obviously. <laughs> when it comes out. Uh, but I just wanted to kind of do an Inktober wrap up because if you follow me on my blog or on Instagram, or maybe you caught a couple of the sketchbook Sundays last month, you saw my Inktober work. And um, I really enjoyed it. This is the first time I have completed Inktober. I tried it a couple of years ago. Um, I knew I wasn't going to be able to do every day back then. And I just did a few and that I, I called it good. That's all I could do. Uh, but this year, um, I decided I would try to really grow and level up some of my skills. And I decided that I was going to draw hands because I always feel like my hands in drawings are awkward and um, they don't look natural. I always feel like the proportions a little bit off. And I just felt like I didn't really understand how they moved and worked and looked and like the foreshortening and all of that. So I decided that I was going to draw hands every day. And then at the last minute I decided, and I'm going to follow the Inktober prompts and not just, you know, arbitrarily draw a hand every day. Um, so since I gave myself those two guidelines. I did give myself some freedom with the medium that I was going to use, although I was mainly working in alcohol markers because um, that was another thing that I wanted to challenge myself with. I have used alcohol markers for years, but I tend to use them more as a craft medium since they are a um, material that fades. I've never really done finished artwork with them or drew with them very much because I'm like, oh, they're going to fade. I don't really want to put a lot of time in with these markers, but I thought since I'm working in sketchbooks for the most part, it would be fun to use this medium that I typically just use for rubber stamping, which is a hobby I enjoy, which you know if you're here on the channel, if you've been following for a long time. Um, but I thought it'd be fun to really kind of let loose with them and kind of be wild and draw big and color and, and all that stuff with them. So uh, that's kind of where I started the challenge from. It wasn't easy. Uh, I knew I really wanted to push my skills, so I put quite a bit of time into each of my sketches. And I know a lot of people don't want to talk about how much time they put into their Inktober sketches. Like they want, they think it's like some badge of honor to say it only took 10 minutes or 15 minutes or whatever. But I don't think I did. I might have done one that was under an hour. And, um, that was with a water-based marker, <laughs> you know, so it was something I was a little bit more comfortable with. Most of them took about an hour and a half. I think some probably took about two hours. This was not, you know, just scrolling it off and calling it a day. I really wanted to push myself and not, um, not just kind of phone it in because, you know, you can kind of plateau in, you know, if you've been doing art, you're doing any sort of, if you've been doing anything, that you enjoy. You get into it, you kind of, you go up, 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 like you're learning and you're growing and everything's great. And you're getting all these like highs from the new things you're learning, but then you get comfortable and you just do the same stuff that you know that's going to yield the predictable results. And then after a while you get kind of burnt out and that's how I had been feeling. So I really wanted to create this art where I wasn't going to force myself to record it and upload it. And it was just going to be for me to push myself because if I'm not worried about a camera rolling, then I'm not worried about the hot mess. If, if the hot mess stage lasts, most of the drawing or if it is a complete disaster when I'm done and it doesn't come out. If I'm not recording, I'm not worried about it. So that's why I didn't do videos for all of these. Just the, uh, I time-lapsed four of them, I think, for Sketchbook Sunday and that was about it. So I want to show you where I began on this journey. This is just going to be an Inktober wrap-up. Um, this actually is not an Inktober drawing, but this is a Sketchbook Sunday I had done in September and um, a few people commented on how hard it is to do hands. And um, I thought, yeah, it's kind of hard. Look at that. I mean, I was like, I knew like parts of it were off and I was kind of like fudging it a little bit. <laughs> and I thought, you know, that would be, a, that's how I kind of came up with the idea to do hands as a challenge. It wasn't my idea. It was, you know, some of you guys' ideas. And I thought, oh, that, that'd be a really fun challenge. So the first, um, and I thought it was gonna be a lot easier than it was, to be honest. And the first drawing that I did was um, right here. And I was pretty happy with this, actually. It was this. I'm just going to give the camera a second to focus in on that. Um, these hands holding a mug. The prompt was ring. So I, the person has a ring on. Um, I used Arteza alcohol markers. Um, I couldn't decide if I wanted a background. I started to put it in. And then I regretted my decision. So I'm like, okay, we're going to have a dark counter. And that's going to be it. And I threw some colored pencils in because it was really choppy and rough looking on this. This is a Jane Davenport journal uh, paper. And it was just, um, I wasn't that happy with it, but 
actually I was pretty happy with it when I got it done but um, it was a struggle it was a struggle and I'm like oh my gosh am I gonna post this because I did post everything on Instagram I'm like am I gonna post this because ugh. Um, as it was going along, I was thinking that there's no way that that's going to work. I don't know if I'll do all these in order because I jumped around to different sketchbooks because I had, um, a few that I wanted to finish up because I'm, like, I have a bad habit of starting sketchbooks and then forgetting about them. So, then I, this is one of my favorite sketchbooks. It's a Fabriano Venice book. Um, I don't know if they've discontinued it or not. You can find them once in a while on, like, Cheap Joe's and on Amazon. They're usually crazy expensive, so... Um, if you do see this for a good price, it's a really great sketchbook. Um, and a viewer kindly sent me one. I was very excited. So I do have another one to actually start after this. So the next day's prompt was mindless. And I thought of like, well, my mindless activity is scrolling a phone. And I cut that habit down this month, uh, the month of October, because I didn't have a bunch of extra time. So I had to get my Inktober time from time I would have otherwise wasted, which was on the, which was like scrolling the phone. But unfortunately it was also some exercise time. I used to go for quite long walks and those got cut way back uh, during October. So I definitely need to get back in the habit of that. Uh, otherwise, I'll, <laughs> otherwise I'll have all new goals that I need to reach and, and uh, art goals are way more fun than fitness goals. I'll tell you that. Um, I was pretty happy with that. I used, um, this, uh, this one I decided cause I'm like the alcohol markers took so long. I'm like, I don't want to spend two hours working tonight. I think I'll just use um, ink. I used uh, ink that I'd watered down and then I used some of that, that folding, weird folding watercolor palette that I um, received, which I'll have a review on later this month. Uh, and it worked pretty well. And I did a little colored pencil, um, just little highlights here and there. It was all right. I definitely, on all these drawings, I was like, wow, that's off. When I get to the end, I'm like, wow, that was really off. I made it look okay, but you could see areas where you had your foreshortening off or fingers weird or, you know, it definitely was a learning curve. So the third day I did this one. You can see still photos of this on my blog. Each Sunday I wrapped up the week and on my Instagram page, which is, I'm just at Lindsay Wyrick on Instagram if you're, if you want to look, but if you're not on Instagram, just go to my blog. You don't have to be a member or anything to see my posts. Um, this one I did with real brush pens and that was a lot of fun. I actually was sitting upstairs watching TV on my couch. So I'm like, oh, I want something that's not going to stain and make a mess because like, I just want to, you know, be comfy on the couch and, you know, have the TV on in the background. So the, the prompt was bait. And I really like the way this came in, except for this crazy bony zombie arm that I have going there. But um, I was pretty happy with the way the rest of it came out. And I felt like I was getting a little bit better uh, feeling of how the hands work together, the fingers work together. I still thought the pinky looked a little weird, but I liked the, um, the pincher, the pincher grip here holding the fish. I thought that came out pretty well. And it was fun for using the ink, the real brush pens, which are kind of like a water-based ink. They, they, they don't blend out as much on this paper. So part of the challenge was making things look smooth and work when you get your shadows down and whatnot. So it was kind of a drawing challenge and a, um, a materials challenge too. And then let's see, the next day would have been the fourth. I'm trying to go in order, but I don't think I'll be able to stick with it for too long. That might've been in the render sketchbook. Oh, this one right here. Um, the prompt is freeze. And I did this hand holding an icicle, which I thought would make a good wand. And then I thought of frozen and that's how that happened. And there was a time lapse of that. And this is render marker paper, which um, I used quite a bit during this challenge. And I liked it because, um, well, I didn't like it at first, but I started to like it a lot more the more that I used it. So that's something that um, I want to encourage you to try those materials that you bought and you don't like because they're bought and paid for. The more you use them, the less you're going to feel bad about it. And um, you probably learn some cool things to do with them or you'll figure out how you can use them with other products to make them useful in your line of work. And if you absolutely can't and they're absolutely not compatible with your style, then you can feel good about passing them along to somebody else because there will be somebody else that would appreciate them. Um, and then, you know, you've exhausted their possibilities. So, uh, this one right here, this was just done with India ink and like the, I think the pit India ink pens. And I just watered it down to get the different tones. The prompt was build. This was one of my shorter ones. I think this was about 45 minutes or less maybe, um, because I didn't have a lot of time that day. And I would just have somebody kind of building something with a screwdriver and a screw. And as I'm looking at this, I'm like, I know I couldn't see the other fingers, but I should have had the background dark so that, because it would be hidden in shadow. So it looks like this person's had a shop accident. Um, but we're growing, we're learning. It's only, it was only day five. So <laughs> on day six, I decided to actually attach a body to the hand because the, the, 
the prompt was husky, so I sketched this lady here with her husky dog and a big full moon because I thought it was nice and October and spooky, and I thought that was all right. That was all done with the markers and um, and a black fine liner. And then we have the seventh. Oh, this is one of my favorites actually. I like this one a lot. Enchanted was the prompt, and I thought this was just very like a. a like a magic apple or a poison apple, whichever way you want to look at it. Um, I just thought that was fun. This was the uh, alcohol markers and just some colored pencil to get the texture on the apple right. And I was really feeling like I was getting my bearings with the alcohol markers at this point, which was nice because I've always done just small things with alcohol markers. I actually ended up running... Um, running some of my alcohol markers dry because I used them so much, especially on the porous paper like the mixed media paper. So let's see, that was day seven. I might have to go out of date because, oh, you know what, was it one of these? Oh, day eight, here we go. Day eight, I worked on markers on toned mixed media paper. So this is the, I think it's Strathmore toned tan paper and the prompt is frail and I really like how this came out because the markers stain the paper and then you can go in with colored pencil and like paint pen and highlight the paper. So you're starting off mid-tone and as long as you have the range of adding in highlights with colored pencils or pens, it's a really effective, um, effective look, I think. So that was a lot of fun. I enjoyed that. And then I went to the toned gray paper the next day and the prompt was swing. So I have a close up of somebody playing a trumpet and I really enjoyed the way that came out too. Um, so I really enjoyed the toned paper. I don't think I would have thought to use toned paper with markers without this challenge. So, um, so I'm really happy about that. Let's see. That was the ninth. Then we have the 10th, which is, oh, this day right here. This is the this might be my all-time favorite one of Inktober. This one, the pattern, the uh, the prompt was pattern, and so I have I thought of like a, somebody who sews and uses patterns. So I have a hand with a sewing tape, and then what I did for the background was I stamped with clear embossing ink all over the background, some pattern, some like rubber stamps of pattern pieces, and then I rubbed chalk uh, all over the background, and it and it clung to the clear embossing ink, and then I just kind of shaded the edges with colored pencil just to make it fit a little bit better because once I put the background in I thought it was I had ruined it and I was so bummed because I loved the way this hand looked but then after I added the shading and kind of pushed up the highlights a bit in the hand with colored pencil I really liked it and this again was the alcohol markers um, on this uh, mixed media paper which is quite porous it's almost like a watercolor paper so uh, yeah I ran a few colors dry <laughs> this month I had to kind of uh, make up my own reinker because um, because yeah it was uh, I was running dry Let's see, day 11 was another one I liked a lot. I used the toned gray, I think that's the, yeah, the toned gray and the prompt was snow and I really liked the way the foreshortening came out on the fingers. Even though some of them were kind of off as I was going, I realized, but I really liked the cuffs going into the shadow and that using the transparent markers was really nice for that because um, you, you know, you stain your paper and you can go really dark on this paper. You've got so much mid-tone and then you can bring out your highlights, which is just really fun to do. I really enjoyed that. And then we have the 12th, can I, oh, the 12th, this was fun. I wasn't completely happy with it, but, um, but it was all right. So this one was the, the prompt was dragon and I didn't know what I was going to do. So I thought maybe a hand holding an egg that the dragon is hatching from. Um, so I had to make up the dragon, which, um, which well, probably my next Inktober challenge should be not using reference photos. <laughs> because I am kind of a slave to reference photos. So I did use a reference photo of a lizard and turn that into a dragon. And I did have a reference photo of somebody holding an egg, which um, which worked out. I made a big mistake when I was drawing the tail. I made the, the, the spike on the tail way too big. And so I'm like, well, that, and that's why I decided to do the background black. And then I can kind of see it if I, if I tip the paper. I can kind of see where I had the drawing. Oh, all my drawings I did with a call erase color pencil, except for the black and white ones I think I just did with a graphite. But um, I really enjoyed using the colored pencils to do my drawings because it kind of just jogs your head out of that basic, um, the basic thing you always use. Doing something new like that I think engages your brain a little bit more and makes you more receptive to trying new things and just keeps you more alert. That's what I think anyway. So I really loved using color erase pencils for that. And they're not so waxy, so you can still layer over ink or watercolor or I'll call ink or water-based ink. Um, and I definitely, my, my filling in the background with black leaves a little to be desired. I got better as I went. But I think it could have been this paper that was a little tricky. This was uh, Strathmore marker paper, which is kind of like a, a thicker card than your typical marker paper. Uh, I didn't use any of the thin marker papers because I like to really lay down a lot of stuff and sometimes they're a little too slick. 
Um, and this was a pretty slick paper, but I, I was I was all happy enough with it for drag for the, the the prompt dragon. You know that's probably about as good as it was gonna get. And let's see, day thirteen there is a time lapse of this. The prompt was ash, and this is actually on lettering paper. And I used um, I used uh, Faber Castell pit pens and Create a Color student colored pencils and pit pit, pit of fine liners because that's what came in my Smart Art box and I just used the supplies for that. I also used a mechanical pencil to sketch it in there. And the theme for this one was ash or the prompt was ash. And I thought that looked all right. It looked like you know somebody holding a cigarette. You don't see that nowadays too much, but uh, but I did have a reference photo for that and. And uh, most of the time I had to find a reference photo and zoom way in or crop way in just on the hand. So it was kind of a, it was kind of difficult because a lot of times when you zoom in really close on a photo, it gets kind of blurry. So you do have to kind of uh, make things up a little bit, especially if you really like the photo and you want to use that, um, that pose. Okay, so that was the 13th, the 14th. I ran, I ran my green marker dry and so, and I didn't have a reinker for it. And so what I did was I used Copic blending solution and some, some uh, Ranger and um, Marami, is it Marami, Marabou alcohol inks, and I mixed up a color and refilled it, and it worked, and it was a pretty good match. So um, if you're ever in a bit, ever in a bind, give that a try. So that's something else I probably wouldn't have tried if I hadn't have been halfway done a drawing and needed more marker. I really hope everything's in focus. I think I have it on a, an autofocus. Um, it's been a crazy day, crazy no power windstorm day, <laughs> and we're catching up. <laughs> um, so this the the prompt for this was overgrown, and um, I liked it at first, and then I noticed it looks like this thumb is deflated, like it was a balloon and it's all deflated. Um, so that kind of bugged me after I looked back at it. And a lot of times I don't really, honestly, I can't really evaluate my work until I take a photo of it and I've uploaded it to Instagram, and then I look back and it's like, what was I thinking? Jeez, Lindsay, that's a deflated thumb if I ever saw one, but. We're all growing. I figured I would put everything up regardless, show it warts and all. And if it came out bad, it came out bad. If it came out great, it came out great. It was what it was. That's how I was going to approach the challenge because I was going to do every day. I was going to show my artwork every day. Um, so I used a fine liner to sketch it. I, I sketched it with colored pencils, outlined it with a fine liner. Since the theme was overgrown, I wanted the, uh, the plant to just kind of take over. I had a reference photo of a girl holding a pot and it had a tiny little aloe in there. So um, the reference photo I thought was pretty good for just the holding the pot and I just kind of made some, you know, imag imaginary leaves, kind of like mother-in-law tongue, but a little bit more flowy. And uh, that was all right. Other than the, the, the deflated thumb, I thought it was fine. <laughs> okay, that brings us up to the 15th which I'm going to say I think was Legend was the prompt, and this is probably my least favorite one from the month because uh, I kind of changed themes as I was going or changed ideas. Um, first of all, I was not happy with the way the hands, uh, the way the hands came out. And <laughs> if you look on Instagram, okay, I wasn't completely honest because I'm pretty sure I have some markers laying over this hand because this hand is a hot mess. But um, what I was thinking at first was somebody is is reading the, like I thought, oh, there's a woman reading the book and then this creepy, the creepy monster head kind of floats in behind her and peeks over her shoulder. But then I thought, oh, it kind of looks more like the monster is reading the book, so I should have gave it monster hands. Um, so that theme was, uh, that whole concept was out the window, but legend, anyway, that is the, uh, I should have signed it, I could sign it with a white pen. Um, that was on day 15, I believe. Yeah, 16, 15 or 16? I don't know. I've completely lost track now. It was one of those days. I think it was, I think it was the 16th. That sound right? It seems like we've at least looked at 16 drawings here. And then on the 17th, the prompt was ornament. And again, I was lazy and wanted to sit upstairs on the warm, comfy couch and watch TV as I drew. And so I used my ink tents colored pencils to do this one here. I did use a little Prismacolor on there. And actually I really, uh, I thought it was okay, but then somebody suggested do a, that would make a really nice Christmas card, and I was just in the middle of filming a Christmas card course, and so what I did was I actually um, took some tracing paper, went over my drawing, and I made this card here with it, and put that. That's going to be in my upcoming class, so it's much more refined, but it just shows you how your sketchbook can be a wellspring of ideas for other projects that you're working on. So it definitely pays to keep a sketchbook. So that was the 17th. On the 18th, the prompt was Misfit. And that was kind of tricky. The only thing I could think of was the band, The Misfits, which is a punk rock band. 
Um, and so I didn't know how I was going to do that in hands. I'm like, well, I could do like a hand holding drumsticks or a guitar, uh, but I didn't know how I was really going to get that point across. So what I did was I spelled out the word misfit in sign language and I had, and the misfits logo is a, ske a skeleton. Uh, that's their logo. So I put the logo on a, on a, guitar pick. I just drew some guitar sticks in their cla their uh, signature guitar and then I just spelled the word misfit in, Mer in American Sign Language and I did throw a couple of skeleton hands in there just for fun. Uh, just also so I could work on the the bones of a hand as well. And um, it's not my favorite but I think it was probably one of the more creative takes on the prompt. So um, or maybe it was really obvious. I'm not sure. I thought it felt pretty creative but um, you can have your own opinion on what you think about that. <laughs> Everyone's entitled to their opinion. And then on the 19th, that was the 18th, I do believe. Yep, on the 19th, I decided I was going to break into my, um, one of my big Arteza sketchbooks because I was just feeling a little constrained with the smaller pages. Uh, and so the term, the uh, prompt was sling. And I found it afterwards, there's actually a drink called the Singapore sling. If I knew this ahead of time, I would have been even cooler to say that, well, let's say if I was cool to begin with, which is very debatable. But, um, so I took the, uh, somebody sling in a drink. And so they're, and actually Singapore sling is a red drink like that. So I had somebody like holding a shaker. The hand was a nightmare. Uh, this hand, ironically, where you just peeks in from the corner came out great, but that one was, oh, I had to rework that so many times. I spilled a paint pen. I tried to open up a paint pen because it wasn't flowing and it was just that it doesn't like to work on this paper. And I spilled it all over. It was like flesh colored ink. So I had it smeared over. Then I smeared a bunch of other acrylic ink on there. And then I resketched it because it was a hot mess. And I finally came out with something that was all right. <laughs> but that was rough. That was a real rough one. I was thinking, oh, what have I done? This is this is taking forever. And you know, a lot of these were done late, like started like at 9 p.m. And I was, just, you know, but I'm like, I am not gonna, I'm not gonna mess up. I'm not gonna stop on like day 19. I've made it this far. I'm gonna keep making, keep going. There's a time lapse of this one. This uh, prompt was tread. So I wanted to see the tread of a shoe. So the sole of a shoe and I have someone tying their shoe, which was really interesting and fun to draw. Um, I used a negative space around the hands to really help me place everything. Um, and I felt a lot more comfortable as I was, as I was sketching that. I used watercolors uh, for this one, which also felt a lot more comfortable because that's what I am you know, I'm mostly comfortable, more comfortable with watercolors than any other medium, probably. And then I really liked the way this one came out and the prompt was treasure. And I thought, well, what greater treasure is there than love, true love. So got the hands making a heart. And I really like how that one came out. And then uh, 22, the theme was ghost. So I thought of the movie ghost and the pottery scene. And so I had somebody doing pottery because I thought that would be really hard and interesting to draw. And 23, the uh, prompt was ancient. And so I figured, well, everyone calls like old, like iPhones are a couple of years old antiques, then a candlestick phone would be ancient. And I used some silver ink, which was kind of, you know, I don't know if you can kind of see it glaring. I'm not sure if I, I kind of regretted it after I first did it. And I regret this highlight here, but all in all, I think it was all right. Um, I just found like an old public domain vintage photo of a girl on a, on a candlestick phone and just used watered down ink and uh, did it that way. And I used one of those brush pens that had the ink in it, one of those Pentel brush pens. Um, and I can't say I really enjoyed that media that much, but um, yeah, I learned something. So that's good. 24 was dizzy. And so I just drew a girl spinning with her hair spinning and just her kind of focus on her hands, but just get the hair so you can see she's twirling. And gosh, I don't doubt anyone is still watching. 25, what was 25? Oh, 20. Oh, we missed 16. <laughs> okay, we'll just take a break from 20. I probably showed you 25. But maybe 25 was legend and I skipped ahead in my book. Anyway, 16 was wild. So I did like, kind of like, you know, if you're at a rock concert and you're making like, woo, rock on um, hands. I did, I, and I like the way that came out. That drew up really easily. It was one of those like, thank you. Everything is working today. And it was easy and yay. You know, I really needed it by that, by day 16. Um, okay, so I'm trying to figure out where... I forgot one. 26. You know what? I think Legend might have been 26. Maybe that was that was it because I don't think I missed any other any other days. Oh no, 26 is right here. 26 is that was dark. And so I just did hands kind of coming out of the darkness holding a skull of some some sort. Um with a black background. You can see my black marker starting to run out now. <laughs> so I need to I need to re-ink that. And um then the 27th was coat 
And I think I did a time lapse of this, uh, so I did a coat, somebody applying a coat of nail polish because it's hands, and so that worked out. I like the colors, that was watercolor. I enjoyed that one quite a bit. Um, 28 was ride, and I enjoyed this where, you know, somebody's just holding onto a bicycle, they're riding a bicycle, and uh, that was fun. I felt like that the drawing went really easy on that one, which was nice. So I was starting to feel like I was coming into my um, my own a little bit. This was so fun because I had to use a lot of imagination and creativity. Um, this one was uh, injured, so I have zombie hands kind of crawling out of a grave all injured, and uh, it, that was fun to do in alcohol markers and to kind of compose and build up and figure out how the lighting would go, which was a big challenge because, you know, I had a sky and tombstones and a hill and a moon. It's like, how would I light things up and make it seem nighttime-ish? So that was a nice challenge and I enjoyed it. The 30th was, um, oh, I found the 25th. We're a little out of it. Let's go to the 25th. 25th was something I want to explore more. I used um, uh, pen pastel color splendor and colored pencils on a gessoed scrap of matte board. And that's something I'm going to play with more because I really liked what was happening. And I want to try the powder blender product. And I think I'm going to order some as a treat for myself for finishing Inktober uh, because that's kind of what I was emulating. This was fun. It took quite a long time. Um, so I'm not sure if that technique's for me or not, but I also know, I'm not sure if it's exactly this, the right technique because I was using what I had and not what the product actually is. Um, here I have the 30th, which was catch, and so I just tried to do a space mystical scene, catching a star, I don't know, I was, catch, that was a tough one for me. And um, finally, what was my last one? I don't remember what book I did it in. Oh, this one, it was ripe. And so I was going for a stinky sock, but I should have done like a white sock with like colorful stripes, like uh, like blue stripes or something like a boy's sock. But I, instead I went with this kind of funky, colorful one. So I don't know if I got the stinky sock vibe, but I did like the way the hands came out and I put uh, the stink lines didn't really look like stink lines. They were more like steam or fanciful swirls. So I put some flies to sell the, the idea a little bit more. But uh, but there you have it. Those That's my Inktober wrap up. I'll do another video on what I learned from Inktober, I guess, coming up in a day or two, uh, because I don't know if I really got into that here. But this video so long so I'm gonna say adios and thank you so much for watching give me a thumbs up if you like it until next time happy creating